this computer. All right, great to hear. So current events, we have Alice, let's hear it. It was about- the Yo, you gotta stay up front here. No, I just had to get my photo taken. Come on up, come on up. I at least bring the thing up. Yeah, it's fine. That's what I want you to do. Yeah, refer to that. But look, right now there's only two students in here. So. Thank goodness, and I know one of them. Yes. I have to find it. Whenever you're ready. Yeah. Maybe. You good? I couldn't find it, but I know what I need to say anyway. I just need his name. Okay. His name is Ed Asner. He died on the 29th. And he played in a lot of different things, but I think the thing he's most well known for is Carl from Up, the movie Up. So he's a famous actor. Yes. Okay. So, and yeah, he died on the 29th. So, and I thought it was important because, like, a lot of people like to think about famous actors and stuff like that as like household names and you like you can feel connected to the person even if they don't know you like for example i when i heard about grant imahara from mythbusters dying i cried <laughs> that's the first time i ever cried over a famous death and because you know he could you could have grown up with him in, in your shows and movies and stuff so hearing him die could have affected you. All right. Uh, so. Okay. Yeah, and uh, he was the voice of J. Jonah Jameson, Spider-Man animated series. Oh, I love that show. And uh, obviously, he did a really good job with that. Um, yeah. So the old man from Up, right? Yeah. Oh, man, sad to hear. Sad to hear. All right, Zakai. All right, sorry, Atlas. Good job. Good job. Good work. All right, so we're going to start off today with a bell ringer. Oh, not the vocab. We're going to get right to it. Those that miss can refer to the video, right? Detail the importance of transportation during the industrial age. We'll focus a little bit about Cornelius Vanderbilt today and how he was important, how he made a lot of money during this industrial age, even kind of set the ground for many of these business owners, these tycoons. So there you go. I'll let you guys get working on this. And reminder, these bell ringers are due today. So we should have four of them after today. I'll come around and check towards the end of class. And we have, let's see here, moving around the room. Lindsay. Lindsay, that's right, Lindsay. Good, awesome. See who's maybe not here today. I'm guessing Lindsay and Brady are pictures. Tyler pictures. Okay. Yeah, I don't think they just skip. Roy, what do you think? They're all <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, at least I know That's all I know. Yeah.
What's that? Oh, the first flight was right around 1903. Yeah. Should I screenshot? I'm going to come around and check the bell ringers for you guys in here. Those at home, they'll have to submit it. So you don't have to worry about submitting anything. Okay. So I feel like everybody's finished up now. <clears throat> What's that? That's fine. Yeah, if you want to do that. All right, detail the importance of transportation during the industrial age. What do we have here? What do we got? Go ahead, Brian. Uh, transportation was a huge important aspect of the industrial age. Not only brought effective Yeah, good job. Good job. So with Vanderbilt, you guys researched him yesterday with that activity. And we're going to talk about him today. I have a short video towards the end of class. So I'll show you of his life and how he became such an industrial titan and really connecting the rural areas to the urban areas, how he can extract resources and raw materials from the United States. These, uh, you know, these, these states that provide these resources and rich raw materials and how he can transport those materials to the industrial areas, where they can make a finalized product or a good app, all right? Where else does it have to connect to? So it connects from the industries to the rural areas, raw materials, resources, but where else? Where do these finalized goods need to go to be sold? Alice? The marketplace, right? Yeah, good job. So plain and simple, the marketplace. So you have to have this interconnection of resources, right? You need to have a form of transportation to connect these larger cities together for obviously communication, trade of resources and raw materials. But at the same time, you need to connect these rural areas to the urban areas, not only for transportation of people, but for goods, for streamline of resources to continue this market and to help this industrial process. Does that make sense, guys? All right. So... Again, one of the simplest things for Vanderbilt was, well, I'm going to control transportation. I'm going to control what type of resource and, and raw materials are going to be transported place to place, right? And if you want to utilize his form of transportation, what do you got to do? You got to pay up, right? You got to pay up. So with Carnegie, his vast supply of uh, steel, we talked about him yesterday. Now, the only way he's going to get that sold, the only way he's going to make money if it's transported place to place, right? Okay, from his industries to the marketplace. So it's very, very important that there is a line of transportation, that there is a way for him to get his finalized good, his steel to the marketplace. And that we can connect these cities together, right? How we can connect the rural areas to the urban areas, streamline this industrial process. All right, is there any questions on that? So you see how important it really is to have this form of transportation. Yeah, right? Definitely, definitely. Okay, so that's a bell ringer for today. For those of you who just got in here, I'll, let you, I'll give you a couple seconds to write this down and we're gonna move on. Uh, you guys can fill out your response you know, later in class. I just need to move on here and keep moving. It's all this period, right? 53, okay. That's good? All right, so right now I'd like to go over the industrial giants activity. So please pull that out, follow along. Maybe there's some information that Better you may have missed. Any seniors who have, did not get their picture or need their picture taken for your books to report to the auditorium now. Any student who arrived late that did not get their picture taken previously should, uh, should uh, come down to the Bless auditorium as well. Thank you. Bless you. All right, so these industrial titans, here we go, here we go. We have Andrew Carnegie, I mentioned him already. You guys know all about this man. So very important with the steel production, the mass production of steel during this industrial age, right around the 1870s, right? And uh, how this was impactful for the US to become an industrial power. He's the first person to mass produce steel. And we know the uses of steel during this industrial age. 
One, obviously, to build up the cities, the skyscrapers. Uh, these cities, what we know of today, these huge buildings, these larger-than-life skyscrapers, okay, obviously, where business or industry, the markets are located. Transportation, the only way Vanderbilt's going to spread his railroads all across the United States is with the use of steel. You need rails, right? You need to have this form of steel to help transport this material. So it's very, very important, okay? It's almost like these two work together, right? Wow. You gonna close the door for me, Brady? Oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead. All right, so Carnegie made a name out of himself. What process, you guys remember? What innovation did he help mass produce steel with? What was that called, Lindsay? Bessemer the Bessemer process. Good job. Good job. And I know I mentioned this before with Carnegie, but uh, Pittsburgh is the city we know today has this clean, uh, this very nice city because of Carnegie really donating all of his money back to him. Okay, you see his name scattered all across. It. His name's everywhere. When it comes to roads, bridges, when it comes to uh, a lot of uh, the forms of education, museums, schools, okay, um, parks all throughout Pittsburgh. So he advised a board to help him and the city right, to see exactly what kind of needs the city would obviously need. And uh, Carnegie made sure that this board was fit with the right people to make sure that his income, right, his, his, uh, his money, okay, his uh, sources of money went to the right locations. <clears throat> so again, he developed a monopoly during this time period where he bought up competition he was very, like I mentioned, cruel to his workers, but especially with this industrial tycoon, he gave back a lot of his riches to the city to develop it and obviously make it to what we know Pittsburgh as today. All right, another tycoon, I didn't get to mention him too much, but J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan. So he's very famous with finances and the banking system. The only way that these businesses really got started the only way, like, let's say Carnegie Steel or um, let's say with uh, uh, Rockefeller, Standard Oil, was with grants, with loans, right? With um, investments made by this man. So to get these businesses on the right track, they needed to go to J.P. Morgan to get the loans out to create their industrial empire, right? So J.P. Morgan sits back, gives the loans out so that they can create this empire. And then eventually these business owners will pay back that loan, right? And at the same time, what do you think J.P. Morgan's going to do? He's going to invest into that corporation. He's going to buy shares into that business. So that makes him what? Part owner of it then. So he's like seeing these new innovations happening before his eyes as he's loaning the money out to these key industrial giants as they're building their industrial empire. And then at the same time, Right when they're getting big, right when they're getting started and established, he buys shares and invests into those corporations. So in all reality, he's helping fund the start, the initial start of these industries. And as they're becoming stronger, as they're becoming bigger, he invests them. And as these corporations like Carnegie Steel pumps out steel for the urban areas, for the war effort, okay, for transportation all throughout the United States, his share prices go up, way up. And he's making money just literally sitting back and investing into these corporations. Does that make sense, guys? All right. Eventually, he'll buy Carnegie Steel in 1903 and make it U.S. Steel. And uh, we all know with World War I just about to happen right, in uh, the early 1900s that this is just going to boom. Right? He's going to make a large, large portions of money off of that. All right. Another person, Rockefeller. Standard Oil, right? Very famous for Standard Oil. And uh, he controlled 90% of all U.S. oil production. And there it goes. Oh, I hate when that happens. I think there's too much going on at once. Give me a second, guys, so I pull up this PowerPoint. Yes. Yeah, we can. So let me go over this real quick. I want to get through this material. Whenever this comes up, I don't know why it keeps failing like this. It's annoying. Yeah. 
So we're at Rockefeller. So 90% of all oil, okay, being controlled by Rockefeller in the United States. Okay, and when we get to World War I, again, he's gonna make large sums of money selling this to a lot of countries, these European countries that are utilizing these new forms of machinery and mechanisms that are powered off of oil, off of gas. And he's drilling all throughout the United States. Uh, it comes to a point where even in World War I, he was actually selling a lot of oil to aggressive nations, uh, nations that we would end up going to war against, like Germany, like uh, Austria-Hungary. Have your attention, please. Dylan Peters and Tanner Walden, please report to the high school office. Thank you. As they're expanding and becoming uh, stronger, aggressive countries. Eventually, when the United States get involved with that war, then, yeah, he's going to stop selling. And uh, he says he's going to stop profiting off this oil to these aggressive nations. But beforehand, he's making a huge sum of money selling it to these countries we'd eventually go to war with. Uh, the buildup to World War II, doing the same thing. He saw a very, uh, very big, large opportunity selling it to Germany. Okay, We know of Hitler advancing all throughout Europe. And eventually, when the United States get involved with these neutrality acts, that will cut off. But... At the time, he's making large sums of money, selling it to a lot of these countries at war. And we all know oil, gas, we're very dependent on, still to this day, with a lot of uh, you know, the cars that we use today, a lot of uh, the machinery we use on a daily basis, uh, power generation, you name it. We're trying to look at renewable resources, right? So resources that we can utilize to maybe help the environment out a bit and uh, try to prevent a lot of these emissions from occurring. But for the most part, we're still very dependent on this source of fuel. So you can see how important it really was, how he became an industrial titan uh, just with this resource alone. And 90% of all the production, the oil production, uh, that's a huge sum of money coming his way. All right, and then finally Vanderbilt. I mentioned him a little bit already, and we're gonna watch a video here shortly. But Vanderbilt, Dominating control of the nation's railroad lines in the Northeast, so connecting these larger cities together, right, and uh, connecting all the way out to the Midwest and helping industrialize a lot of these key cities we know as St. Louis, right, moving out into Ohio, moving out all the way into the frontier, connecting the resources, the raw materials to these industrial centers. So it's very, very important for Vanderbilt, obviously, to control these forms of transportation. There's only one way we can get these raw materials to the industries, right? Where the urban areas are, or sorry, where these industries are located in the urban areas is through transportation. There's only one way to get these finalized goods made in, made in the industries to the marketplace, transportation. So I mentioned it already with Carnegie, the only way he's getting his steel to the marketplace is through Vanderbilt's transportation. You name it, oil, standard oil. The only way he's getting the oil, Rockefeller's oil, to the marketplace through Vanderbilt's transportation. Okay, he's got to pay, pay up a sum to transport his goods. All right, is there any questions on that, guys? We good? So I'm going to come around and check your activity from yesterday and along with your bell ring. So have those out ready to go. I'm going to come around and check them through. Those of you at home, please submit them on Canvas so I can give you a grade for them. There is a due date at the end of the day, so please submit that. Right, I will show a video here of Vanderbilt once I get done with talking about some of these key innovations. So make sure you guys obviously note that then. It's a pretty good video. Him. Yes, you can get that from Roy. Can you help him out with that then? And... That's pretty much it. Everybody have a good week.